Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a polynomial equation. We have x plus 1 to the fourth power equals x to the fourth power and we're going to be solving for x values. And I'm going to be presenting three methods. I'll also show you the results from from alpha and a graph at the end. So let's get started. First method. I'd like to expand the left hand side from the binomial theorem x to the 4th plus 4x cubed plus 6x squared plus 4x plus 1. Remember the Pascal's triangle with all the coefficients, 4th row, this is what you get. Now, even though this may look initially like a quartic equation, it's not. It is a cubic equation because x to the 4th power cancels out. And we end up with a cubic. 4x cubed plus 6x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals 0. Yes, there's a cubic formula, but I don't think you want to use it on this problem. That's going to be a little painful. So let's do something, or let's try something that is a little easier. And that's called rational root theorem. So here's how it works. You look at the divisors of 1 plus minus 1, and then divide it by all possibilities for 4, uh, plus minus 1, plus minus 2, plus minus 4, and then you kind of take one number from here and one number from here and pair them up like 1 over 2, 1 over negative 4, so on and so forth. And one of these will work, hopefully, if there are any rational roots. We don't know. Let's do something more fun. Because of the 4x cubed, and most of the coefficients are even, I can do something nicer, and that is multiplying both sides by 2 first. Let's do it. It's still 0, right? So 8x cubed, and the reason behind that, why am I multiplying both sides by 2? To get 8x cubed, because 8 is a perfect square. Isn't that perfect? So let's go ahead and write this as 2x to the third power. Can I do the same thing with the second power, 2x to the second power? But that is 4x squared, and I'm missing a 3. So let's go ahead and just multiply that by 3. And if you use a 2x, you got to multiply by 4 to get 8x, and everything is good, right? And 2 is constant, so we don't care, for now at least, equals 0. Now, what is this calling for? Starts with S. Yes, it's substitution. So let's go ahead and call this T. 2x equals T, or T equals 2x. Remember that. And now we get T cubed plus 3T squared plus 4T plus 2 equals 0. This is a better cubic. If you want to use the cubic formula, go ahead. Get rid of the T squared by replacing T with something like Y minus 1, and then use the cubic formula. But there's still a better way to do it. One of the things that I've been saying all the time, check two things if you have a polynomial equation. And this is one of them. If you, if you look at the coefficients, 1 plus 4 is 5, so is 3 plus 2. What does that mean? The odds and evens are the same, which means t equals negative 1 is a solution. Yay, we got a solution. Right? We didn't even like use trial and error or rational theorem. We know t equals negative 1 is a solution. So we can go ahead and factor it, right? And let's do it. t cubed. To get t equals negative 1, I need to add t squared to this because if you take out a t squared, you're going to get t plus 1. Set it equal to 0, you're going to get t equals negative 1. Does that make sense? That's how you break it down. So I'm going to break it down. Now 2t squared must be followed by 2t or not 2t or 2 -ter. And we have 4t, so that needs to be followed by 2t again and plus 2. You see? Now these are my groups. I'm going to factor by grouping. Take out t squared, t plus 1. Take out 2t, t plus 1. Take out 2, t plus 1. Awesome. It's factored. t plus 1, we knew that it was a factor because t equals negative 1 is a solution. And the other one is going to be t squared plus 2t plus 2 equals 0. That's a quadratic. We can use the quadratic formula. And then find all the t values and then go to x. That's going to be pretty much the first method. Let's finish it up. So t equals negative 1 equals 2x. That gives me x equals negative 1 half. And then by using the quadratic formula, t equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is 8. That's going to give me 2. That's basically going to be negative 2 plus minus. The square root of negative 4 is 2i. Divide that by 2, and you're going to get negative 1 
plus minus i as the t value. So there are three solutions, but I do need the x values, but these are two x values, so I have to divide everything by two. So that means x can be written as negative one plus minus i divided by two. So I got three solutions. This is one of them. This is the other two, right? Two complex, one real. Make sense? I hope it does. And of course, these can be written a little differently, like you can write them as negative one half plus one half of i, or negative one half minus one half of i. It's the more standard, okay? Some people are very picky about standard form, especially some teachers are, I don't want to say crazy, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay, so the second method. Second method, what is our original equation? This one uses subtraction, isn't that cool? Subtract x to the fourth and use difference of two squares because this is the difference of two squares. So it's gonna be x plus one squared plus x squared and then x plus one squared minus x squared, right? But that's again a difference of two squares. Don't worry about it, just simplify easy. And this is gonna turn into two x squared plus two x plus one. And the second one is just gonna be two x plus one because the x squared is gonna cancel out. Set equal to zero, you'll get the solutions. Easy, because this gives us what? Two x plus one equals zero gives us x equals negative one half as before. Right? That makes sense, doesn't it? And this one gives us a quadratic, so let's go ahead and solve it. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, this should look familiar, familiar minus 4ac, which is 8. That should be a negative 4. Does that look familiar? But divide by 4 instead, because this is x. Remember, t is different. t and x are different. So we get negative 2 plus minus. The square root of negative 4 is 2i. Remember, i is the number whose square is 4. And now if you simplify this, you get negative 1 plus minus i divided by 2, and again, I can split it up and write it as negative 1 half plus 1 half of i, or negative 1 half minus 1 half of i. And along with negative 1 half, we get three solutions. Again, two of them are complex, one of them is real, so on and so forth. Make sense? Great. I hope it does. If not, please let me know in the comment section. Somebody will answer your question x plus 1 to the fourth power. This is the third method and the last one. Can you think of a fourth? I, I think I can, but anyways, I'll be quiet. Uh, let's divide both sides by x to the fourth power. So this becomes 1. And now we're going to complexify things. That's the <laughs> same thing we've been doing on the other channel, a plus bi. Oh, you have a channel? Yes, it's about complex numbers. Anyways, that's a different story. Now, fourth root of, or fourth power of something equals one. But if I want to complexify one, I can write it as e to the power two pi n i, where n is an integer. And in this case, you can use n equals one, two, three, four. Why? Because I'm gonna take fourth roots. So x plus one over x is equal to e to the power two pi n i to the power one fourth, which represents four roots, four. Okay, the fourth root, but there also there is also four of them. Let's just take one. How about n equals one? The others are similar. X plus one over x equals e to the power two pi i divided by four pi i over two. But e to the power pi i over two is the same thing as i. Why? Because if you think about it, pi over two radians modulus is one. You're talking about i, man. Okay, that's it. So this is i. So x plus 1 over x is equal to i. What do you uh, make of that, right? Well, we could kind of make it like x plus 1 equals xi. And then subtract x. x minus xi equals negative 1. x times 1 minus i equals negative 1. Divide by 1 minus i. And make the denominator real by multiplying by conjugate. You'll get the x value. That is equal to negative 1 minus i divided by 1 plus 1, which is 2. Again, that's one of the solutions. If you use another root, you'll get the other solutions. And of course, wait a minute. There will be four solutions. Hmm. One of them is probably not going to work. Check it out. Anyways, these are results from Wolfram, Wolfram Alpha. As you can see here, three solutions to the cubic. And here's the graph, tada, right? Two quartic equations intersecting at a single point because there is only one real solution. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.